Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues in which we're playing as Beltran Levia in which we're doing, which I don't know if I've played this nation before, I think we're playing as Free Fighters or the Sinaloa Cartel but definitely not uh, the Beltran Levia Cartel but symbols are needed for forge order from chaos so El Renacimiento I apologize I do not speak Spanish, I wish, kind of wish I could but it is with Sangre e Bayas Brutality is a common trait among Mexico's villains. Explosive luchador uprising toward the cartel too. While the traditional heartland of the syndicate was in the north, the southern territories were a backwater even by criminal standards. When effective control by Sinaloa was severed, the Gauls adopted the Beltran Leviatado, reviving the legacy of the Long Day Cartel. A shortage of peasantry to rob in competition with Atzlan had left the region bare, and now the independent narcos had to make a tough choice on what to prioritize in their newly isolated lands. Exploitation, security, and defense. Which is not bad. We honestly might need that. Uh, it's only level one though, so give us caps. And two cartels, both alike in infamy. Regardless of origin, the recent defeat at the hands of the free fighters of the United Cartels towards three goals get rich, revenge, and kill anyone who gets in their way. Which doesn't sound too bad overall, in my opinion, but you know, yeah, that's just me, and we have no manpower because I'll show you the spirits that we have. Sangre e balas. Well, the goals are grouped, the luchadors continue the revolution, with the conflict staling in the north. The wrestlers turn their eyes southward. Soon, uprisings were occurring in Beltran territory, and it looked like the newborn cartel was not long for this world. In this hour of crisis, a lone ghoul stepped into the spotlight. Nobody knew where they came from, but they spoke Espanol with a thick, rasping accent, but they led a pack of thugs and murders as vicious as any cartel outfit. As the bandit's crew struck back against the freedom fighters, a legend of cruelty and bloodthirstiness was born. The bandit took no prisoners, accepted no surrender, and fought like a demon. By the time the tide turned and the luchadors were driven back to the lands, the bloody bandit had become a de facto leader of the cartel's forces. And rather than face another civil war, the Tientes pledged their allegiance to the new tyrant of Mexico. Hail to the king. Ooh, better just tell Rogosan's resistance targets. Nice, nice, nice. And the two cartels are like an infamy. In a way. Uh, the luchador revolt was inevitable. Decades of mistreatment, neglect, and envious looks at the freedom of their neighbors boiled into a full-scale liberation war in the cartel lands. And in another sense, the fact that this uprising was headed by a trio of masked goons obsessed with wrestling was pretty much impossible to fathom. The cartel was shaking, torn asunder, but still fighting, and now with the dust settling, they are more than ready to once again reassert themselves both as the masses of Sinaloa, but its criminal, criminal kingpins of the waste. The courage will prevail. Creates a new army commander with unique traits. The cunning will prevail. New cartel operative. I kind of want this one. So, time for a shake-up. Ghouls on board. Business of vice. I like that one too. Keeping control. Where's this one? That's not bad either. Arm the Sicarios. Stop the brain drain. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. That's 120 days though. Um, we'll stop the brain drain first. So the longer we let the excess of our lands continue, the sooner we'll be bereft of, bereft of all but the most pitiful of subjects. Providing at least some incentive to worthwhile smooth skins. To the worthwhile smooth skins in our community, we will halt the mass departure. Ed educational stuff, uh, research blocks. That's not bad. It helps we help slow down this stuff here, because um, we're losing manpower every week. Uh, time for a shakeup. Our defeat at the hands of the luchadors is in the cartel in a stagnant coma, forever licking wounds and blooding revenge while our enemies grow stronger. But things are changing in Mexico, and some stops sitting around and get what's ours. New dynasty. Well, we're not them. So, no mas iguales. Too much time is wasted on divisions of power, making the whole and causing a greater strife. Let's solve this issue permanently. There will be no equals to my rule. Not from any smooth skins from Sinaloa or anyone else. Ghouls on boats. While our naval activities have traditionally been limited to smuggling operations and to small-time piracy, with their operations expanding, the time has come for us to build a proper navy so as to better assert and protect the dominance of the Gulf Sea. The business of ice. The empires of Atzalan and Itza are the cartel's first port of call when it comes to business. Thanks to the subtle pressure of the Baron and our own military obsessed focus, the drug trade and so the Mexico is flourishing and keeping control. Our business model traditionally revolves around infiltration and smuggling of contraband into foreign nations, but this has meant that the lands under direct control have languished. Building up our own domestic industry helped balance our economy and provide a semblance of stability to our territories. Jose, thank you. And there's the natural spirits. Protectors guarantee, which is alright for Tlaloc. Then we have a refugee crisis, which is very, very bad. Then we have cartel nation, which is very bad as well because we're losing stability every week. We get more weekly war support, which is okay. Uh, but I would prefer to not lose any stability at all. Criminal economy is okay. Not great, especially for civilian factories. Jesus Christ. We are a sore loser, which sucks. And then, of course, now we have vicious a reputation. The fall of the Colibri Cartel. The Cartel, a sister organization to the Sinaloa outfit, has been slowly degraded into a shadow of its former self. Operating as a mere nuisance in the corners of the Tlaloc's machine empire. Recently, however, their luck has changed drastically with a subdivision of Tlaloc's memory known as Santa Ana crushing what little remained of the organization. The remnants of this destroyed outfit had trouble finding a new home with their reputation and have made their way to Sinaloa's refugees, hoping for us to honor their distant fraternal bond. Welcome to Sinaloa. With this stability, pass. 
Um, we're gonna lose that manpower probably any of these eventually. Ah, bring them on, why not? We don't have that much uh, stability. God dang it, it sucks. Now, we're still trying to stop the brain drain, but you know, whatever. It is what it is right now, currently. Other than that, not much else has really happened. Um, yeah, I hate this refugee crisis thing. Oh, terrible. I got secret language done though. Uh, stop the brain drain to a degree. Um, is there really anything, nothing else where we can just stop doing that? Join this cartel research. Unless it's down here. The Gulf Conference. Benefactor, cut the lines. Um, let the sleeping gods lie. Meet me in the middle. Friends with benefits. I forget which one I did. Partners in crime. I didn't. I remember I went one way with one of these. I probably probably do partners in crime. Tokens of affection, because you can get married. Because I think I did get married last time we, when I played as uh, Sinaloa Cartel. I could be wrong. Or maybe we'll get married this time, and then say, next time I play Sinaloa Cartel, I'm going to do that one. Effective equals Army of Two, which is a game I never played before, but... Receive major d default... Major, default major status in the world. The little guys. The only game in town. Rewriting the will. Okay, I think approval and whatnot. Um, so now we have this one, Refugee Crisis. Can we ever get rid of that? Refugee... Ah! Okay, so we're over here then to do that one. Autarky. Now I can't remember what I did last time when I played this other group, so we'll probably go this way and get rid of this, because I, I just want to get rid of this so badly. Um, so, probably we'll do Keeping Control next. Uh, 5,000 Parlos Diversification. Uh, I think I would have did this one last time, probably. So I'll do it again now when I play Sinaloa Cartel. It'll remind me when I need to take bypass embargoes. There are very few groups willing to trade with us, meaning that the obtainment of resources become difficult. Building a self-sustaining economic modern territory will help rectify so the situation. ahead and did La Massacre del Norte. The northern plains of long resisted cartel overlordship and to this day remains a thorn in our side. If these helps our smooth skins will not serve as subjects, and the corrupts will serve as fertilizer. So, I reaffirm ties. While our relations have been somewhat shaky in the past, the cartels must stand together to be prosper. Establishing a special relationship will provide a deterrent any, to any over-eager expansion by uh, our neighbors for time, to, for the time to come. I cannot speak there for some reason. Oh my goodness, so bad of me. Oh well. I'll let time go on and let's do a lot of this stuff too. Nice. Um, I did cut this down so that we, and we're no longer losing man, man. Men every week. I really can't speak, can I? Um, we still have a criminal, crimi criminal uh, economy, cartel nation. The lock's still alive. It's 2076. I believe I did leave this on a historical, so we'll see what happens. We're not going to build any cities. We'll just buy them if we have to. Begin scavenging program. Sure, why not? Um, assimilation. Not caring about that right now too much. Uh, it's a little bit of time. Let's go grab and code signals. That'll be good. Because we have this stuff over here, maintaining control. While we lay claim to vast territories of the land, there's peasants' acceptance of our rules maintained almost entirely through equal parts, desperation, and fear. Keeping this delicate balance is essential to avoiding unfortunate repercussions. Current stability is 20%, fortunately. And if we do this, we get another city, which is great. Invest in the people. We get a city and more uh, stability, basically. Or tone down oppression. Oh, followers. Uh, new. No. Maybe we don't want them. Hmm. I get rid of them. Uh, weapon market. Oh, weapon market, huh? Uh, oh, okay. Then. Invest in the people. I don't mind that. That's a lot. Quite a bit of stability. We have so, quite a few off. Uh, seven, seven, seven workers from occupation probably off map city stuff. So, what is this one? Oh. Quemando el foro. <clears throat> The traders of the vice royalty are easy pickings, growing fat on the wealthy trade barges, and overconfident due to the locks guarantee. Let's teach these overblown street vendors the new lesson. No mas iguales. Of course, I read this one earlier too, so if you're into this game, please go right ahead. Junk, gunboats, gulf, trade, unlock cartel operations. I love cartel operations. And uh, customs union. But generally, Sumo remains one of our only supporters in the region on the condition that we could curtail some of our more illicit operations in its territory. Well, unfortunate. The profits of legitimate trade with hent are more than make up for it. Should be great. Nice. Very nice. Um, you know what? We could do that. Or we could come over here and do this. No. Or we could do this one. Yeah. So since we're not again losing any more manpower, I just decided to cut things down a little bit more. Um, grab some of that because it makes it ever so slightly cheaper. Uh, we could spend that army XP. But let's come over here. and We have a recon already, which is nice. Ghoul infantry and some ghoul infantry. And making sure that these guys are at least at the minimum 18 combat width because I like I like them. 18 combat width. 
the easy solution, Windward Islands, zero of the state's population will be destroyed, equaling 162 civilians, but get some out of it. And you know what, we'll lose 50% caps income for a little bit, but... Alright, whatever. Actually, do we have a... We don't have a note here, it's El Foro, which sucks, but you know, whatever. Um, maintaining control is always nice. Purchase pistols would be good, but we can't... I don't think, I don't think they have any of that. If I get the followers... Well, I guess we're coming here no matter what. Try to divert their supplies, but we hey we tried. I tried. And we're also going conventional warfare just because I don't want to do any other type of warfare. Um asymmetric is just I hate militia and stuff like that, so it's not worth it. It's just really, 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 really not worth it. So I guess we have the followers here now. Great. God dang we lost even more political power. What is this? Oh, yeah. Um, I did grab this guy, Rodriguez, for 10% more political power. We did get uh, Antonio Corona. I did go to a well-equipped army already. They, we started with Cartel Rejects, which made it very cheap to produce guns, but they weren't very good, so instead I went with this one for more consumer goods, better caps income, and I also went with this one, Costa Corp Entertainment. Slightly more political power, stability, and passive caps income, so I thought that was... I thought that was worth it, you know? Overall. Human things, bottle caps economy, refugees, let them come because we need more manpower and stuff like that. So, drastic measures, uh, followers, don't care. Oh, well, shh, Nikes. Well, I didn't realize that would happen. Um, okay, well, we'll be ready for them. I'll do that two here. Add cartel alignment, passive caps income, extra trade to us. That'd be kind of nice. Distribution stuff, agricultural centralization sounds pretty good. But what do we want immediately? Durango becomes a member state of the El Foro Economic Trade Node. So then construction speed would be pretty nice, but we'll just get our stuff. The Gulf Conference. Bandidos, dictators, and capos. Our aspirations and methods are vastly different, but our common enemies have united us together, both economically and militarily. It's time for us to form alliance properly and plan the future of an era for the Gulf. Also, we're going to arm these guys too, but... Uh, the majority of our military troops are a little more than thugs, suitable only for terrorizing the infirm and elderly. In contrast, our guard tell and forces are well trained, effective killers, and utilizing them as a shock infantry would be bolstering our armor strength. Now, we can do Fire and Fury, but I hate asymmetric warfare. At least, it's not, I just don't find it very good. And soaking the flames, I mean, it's not really worth it. So, quiet violence. Professionalism in battles, both in art and in science. The knowledge not only on how to kill, but when, where, and why is the skill that produces a true warrior where before they're simply a killer. Squad tactics. Rather than organize the troops into large battalions, focus on smaller, close to the squads needed. Capable of performing duties both in pitched battle and individual missions, these squads will be a welcome supplement to domestic and international operations. Scientific procurement. So I to say, but our scientific community was already pitiful before everyone started leaving. By now, the damage is pretty much done. To make up for the lost time, we can instead procure a cutting edge research and researchers from our more technologically advanced and neighbors. And we're still at war with uh, El Foro, or the Duchies of <clears throat> the Vice Royalty, of course. Uh, we did do squad tactics, and we're currently doing fear and loathing, fear and loathing, and hatred. Anger is a powerful motivator, but requires a fire inside the spirit that must be quacks awake. It matters not who our troops hate, so long as they channel that fury towards their enemies. It did do Gulf trade. Sinaloa. I also had a presence in the Baja even before the bombs dropped, and while the bandito lords who now control the potential may not appreciate our intrusion, our operations come with a guarantee of support for the tenu tenuous leadership, granting us a great jumping point for smuggling further afield. Smuggling caches. Recent supply points along the Pacific coast are essential for successful smuggling, but are a weak point in terms of naval defense. Shoring up these points in a proper naval base will prevent unwanted seaborne intrusion. Well, that'd be good. And coastal ecosystem? While it may seem like a violent backwater compared to the peaceful metropoles of Rio, California, the West Coast is full of wealth if you know where to look. Our positive relationships with the other alternative nations of the Gulf allow for an unprecedented level of economic growth but on the foundation of highly calculated greed. So this one would be good as well to do next, of course. Armaments of avarice. Pipe weapons are for two big gangsters and brain dead raiders. Our cartels will have the finest in Mexican weaponry, as befitting an organization of our elevated caliber, as we are just kind of hanging out here. I'm thinking at this point, uh, they still got quite a bit of manpower. If we let them in, that won't be very good for us, so... I've already... I've actually really, really, really condensed down how many divisions we have, just by combining them, so we have enough stockpile of everything here, so... I wouldn't mind maybe just letting them in and then just trying to run into our lines some more, maybe? Um, I just want to bait them into attack because they did good war with us. They have plenty of divisions of manpower yet still, which does suck for us. So. Uh, I'll probably have to get to crack shots. Uh, fear and loathing and hatred. Let's do the Gulf Conference first, or the Grand Inclusion. Or the, the Grand Incursion. Three fighters make a big show of the protection of the Royce Sand Passes, but in reality, the control is only strongly felt in urban areas. A coordinated terror strike on the southern bad Badlands will remind whatever smooth kings that survive who really could control the wastes. But the Gulf Conference first. As we have also gotten Isabella Garcia, more population, recruitable population factor, monthly population. I know with Andres Bustamante, because it gives us daily command power, which is okay. Better leader skills, bonuses, and more daily compliance, which will be helpful later on. 
Uh, Pueblo Air Bases, Gulf Conference. Um, we want to choose someone that we don't really choose usually. Civilizations, that's what I usually do. Campaign. Let's do that one. Dude, that's a little different than normal. I'll do that one too. So let's see what happens with the conference. Oh, easy solution? Sure. Economic investment? Sure. Scientific procurement, balance research. Military advancements. Huh. Well, active. Gulf Conference start. Fanfare. And festivities greet at the beginning of the Gulf Conference as the envoys from the Baja, Sinaloa, and Henta meet. Are met. The Generalissimo started the conference with a great feast, and now filled with good cheer and better booze, the common, combined villains of the Gulf have begun their plotting. Let's get down to business. Hmm. Interesting industrial advancements. Oh, I'll just keep it balanced ish for now, or whatever. Uh, bottle caps don't really care too much. Okay, what happens if we just let them in? Like we do something like bing bong, ding dong dong. This might be a really bad idea, so before we do that, let's save, because they just love attacking our lines a whole bunch. We've got a few extra spare divisions. I'm just worried that someone else is going to try to attack and invade us. Or, uh, so, uh, spec ops, you know what, we'll spend it now just to get them good to go. So we'll just train 18, or train them as 18 combat width. Get high, go there, let them come in. Economic agreements. We're well, not the main goal of the conference, the meeting of the major powers of the Gulf have allowed for a unique economic opportunities. While there are several ways we can coordinate our efforts, each with their own benefits, we should focus on one capstone and issue that will benefit all nations equally. Um, new non-compete arms deals? It's not bad. Share resource treaties. Share resource treaties. Oh, well, it's probably best to do this one. Much like our economic agreements, we can use this unique opportunity to promote our new diplomatic overtures or initiatives. As the main event draws near, we should only have time to push one through one through one major diplomatic act. Which one should we focus on? Super Friendship Alliance. It's not bad. Open ports. Uh, I'll take the bread basket. Let's get some. You know what? We'll do the bread basket. The mask menaces. Time's come for the main event dealing with the so called free fighters. Well, the previous agendas have drawn out our nation's closer. It's no secret that our main goal has been gaining assistance in culling luchadors. With well, the OBI sufficiently buttered up, we can now press a case in addressing the mask menace. Any bullets? Volunteers. Future protection. Let's try that one. So let them come across. And let them stack up and see what happens. Actually, if anything, we don't even have to guard this one, because they can come over here too. Oh, uh, well, we can get, block them off as well. We only have seven divisions here. Unexploded nuclear bomb. As by the centuries have come and gone, the horrors of the Great War continue to rear their ugly heads. In the outskirts of a row of village, the undetonated remains of a low-grade nuclear war are uncovered by farmhands before breaking new ground. Well, panicked first. It became clear the bomb was a dud, and I left with the decision to either cordon off the air or attempt to fuse it. Leave a B. Open it up. 25% chance population change by 750. Well, oh, it exploded. Crap. Uh, conclusion. The conference coming to a close. The parties are now slowly filing out and returning to their nations. Exchanging glad farewell and assurances of future jolly cooperation. Well, this may turn out to have been a huge waste of time, but now at least the future looks bright. Well, at least all things considered. Nice. Could be a lot worse. Uh, let's go over here and we'll choose infrastructure now. With this coal room, it'd be kind of nice, but we'll see. Factory output's really strong, though, and I like that a lot. Caps? We're all about caps. We gotta get caps. So that's a lot of divisions, so we're gonna do this. Because they will attack us like crazy. I'll send happy guys up here, too. Why not? Nice. Let them suffer around here. Um, ah, I need this, too. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Scout kits, that's fine. We'll get at least one division out, which would be good. Um, so yeah, we're just going to be hanging out here quite a bit, like normal, and keep doing what we need to do. Hitting compartments. Okay, perhaps a bit amount of pre-war or pre-planning is needed for our shipwork. Building better, more conspicuous ve vessels with greater haulage is our priority. Um, tax regulation. <clears throat> Our current system of taxation is barely concealed extortion, where the subject is being called taxed as many times as their enforcers feel appropriate. Reorganizing our system to a more uniform and perhaps minutely less exploitative system will increase our revenue dramatically. Distribution centers. The bombed out remains of pre-war roads and highways are no longer sufficient to cater to our burgeoning economy. To accommodate the decimates of growth, new infrastructure projects need to supplement or supersede the aging tarmacs of the old world. Agricultural centralization. Very little care has been taken in in the affairs of the normies, aside from the collection of taxes and brutal suppression dissent. If we organize a desperate homestead into a cohesive industrial region, both of these tasks would be far more simple and profitable. And resource diversification. 
Scavengers become a large secondary industry among our smooth-skinned population who have turned the stripping of pre-war rugs into a fine art, but ruins aren't infinite. And we start properly regulating this practice before the system collapses in, in on itself and crash crops. Narcotic crops are not easy to cultivate and relying on monocultures with degraded or already meager soil. Balancing our production with consumption-oriented crops will help nip this problem in the bud. Human resources. <clears throat> it turns out you can put a price on humanity. That price is quite profitable indeed. And now, after some uh, not totally canoodling with console commands, because we are stuck at this point and not trying to destroy enemy divisions by using that. Uh, yeah, uh, we're doing okay right now. Um, yeah, this would have just taken forever if we didn't. Uh, we'd just be a stalemate for forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And it would been really annoying. So, um, yeah, like I said, couch tees, not great. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's okay. It's going on. But uh, I just want to keep pushing, just because I've been playing this for like. At least an hour and a half, so... Yeah. Criminal Industrial Project, the new arms race. Going legit. Well... National Market Speculation? Limiting our operations in Mexico proper demonstrates a simple lack of vision. Wherever there's a great city of vice or want, the cartel will be there ready to provide all of uh, life's pleasures and also take the benefactor. Now, the Generalissimo is a generous patron as his, his interests align with yours. Luckily, he's just as keen to remove the luchadors from Mexico as we are and will gladly provide the means to do so for a very reasonable price. Ah, hidden compartments go. Oh, get from above, there's that one. Yeah, we read the one earlier. Junk gunboats, no need for fancy shipwork or extravagant design. If it floats, it's a boat. If it floats, it's a boat. Very nice, so. And we're making more divisions too, so which is also a very good thing, just in case. Once Tlaloc dies, of course, we will have to continue pushing. And, uh, get ready to really defend everything and what else we have here, so. Um, yeah, get that one too. That'd be nice. That'd be very nice to have too. So, <clears throat> it's just a pain in the butt doing this because the infantry is just really sucky and it's not good. And we try to use special forces and it's still not that great. So, hey, just go there. You, you come here. Go here. Go here. There you go. The photo would be nice. Kill all these other divisions off. And, I don't know, I'm debating what we should get. I like the division attack. 10% more is pretty darn good. Breakthrough is very good. And attack? Yeah, it's pretty decent. Attack, more attack and breakthrough. But even more population, even though we're pretty good. We haven't even gotten rid of this one yet, so... As much as I want Ramon the Recruiter, uh, let's get more attack and breakthrough. Minus 5% more cost. But you also get more pla max planning factor, which I'm not sure what is max planning factor, so... Just get more attack. You know what, let's go with Brute, because infantry, it, it, it's such a high cost for doing that, so... Um... <clears throat> Y'all help out here if we can. But this war really pushes us over the edge to really make sure that we can kind of take out whoever we want. So. Good, good, good. Come back up here. Do lots of special forces things. And we have no stability. Go figure. Burn stuff down. Get more civvies. Yeah, we're just building up a lot of roads and whatnot right now. So. Uh, we might go legit. We'll see what happens. Rancher bribes. Uh, Arizona ranchers not long, not long for this world. Whether it be appetites of the legion or expansion is real. Well, as bodes ill for the long run. For now, it makes sense. It makes them especially weak to their own influence, which is not bad. So, so at this point, should we hill spider? Sure, why not? <clears throat> Down the story. Cartel Nation. Eh. Economic precision is great. Photo. Well, I'll start expanding that quite a bit more, hopefully. Ah. And are we over? Should be soon. Oh, we are. Very nice. Why'd you guys go back up there? Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. It's gonna battle for Hoover Dam. And there goes the Mojave Territories. But we got the Vice Royalty, like I said, with some minimal cash cons commands because it was really sucky. But if you enjoyed the video so far, or enjoyed the video, uh, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll see what else we can do with the Bethron Levia Cartel. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.